Hello and welcome to this very, very special live broadcast across three channels, uh, LinkedIn, Facebook and Twitter, and uh, which is very appropriate because I'm talking to a complete media guru and somebody I've got to know quite well over the last few months. And we've had some really great chats. Um, it's Randall, Randall Libero. Randall, how are you? It's great to see you. Hi, Simon. Thanks for uh, having me join you today. I've been watching your videos for some time and uh, learning a lot and uh, glad to be here today. No, thanks. And I've learned a lot from you in our chats. And uh, for those who don't know uh, Randall or those who do but want reminding, so Randall is producer, senior executive producer at uh, Voice American Network Studios. He's a media strategist, radio and TV host, and he's just a minefield of, of a minefield of information around media and the whole, you know, the whole movie scene. We've had some really fascinating chats, and I've got my poster of uh, Thunderball on the wall behind me. So, uh, <laughs> Thunderball. <I'd> <laughs> All right. <laughs> so it's it's great to great to be chatting with you, and um, we're going to be talking about the power of media uh, in relation to you or us, our businesses, and the world. And uh, mm -hmm. you know, I, I think it's so appropriate given that you know, I think the world is moving forward to being. I think. We're moving into globalization, Mark, too. We're going to be increasingly online, increasingly um, using and dependent on media. So maybe if we just kick off, maybe just give the audience a little overview of you and your background and, and what you're doing today. <laughs> well, I've been working in as a producer in online media for almost 16 years now. Uh, I came to Voice America in 2005, and I was listening actually to the network before I even came here, and I realized that they were in Phoenix, so I was actually down the street from me <laughs> over here in <laughs> Tempe. So I was um, really enamored, and I really thought that online media was going to be the future, and uh, and when I met everyone at Voice America, they were they had the same vision. And so I brought all my Hollywood contacts and everything, and I started with people like John Gray and John Demartini and Joe Dispenza and people like that who didn't have a media strategy, which is one thing we're going to be talking about today. Yeah. So this is before YouTube, before Facebook. I mean, think back in the early, early days of the internet uh, with just audio streaming. So Voice America was the very first online network that had multiple channels that was going on a live broadcast schedule with actual programming before yeah. anybody knew what a podcast app was. So it was really interesting creating, and they had proprietary software where you could do live TV uh, and on-demand TV online. Uh, we called it, still called the TV back in those days. And um, <laughs> yeah, so those are the, what we call here in Phoenix, the wild west days of the internet. Um, yeah. Because that was, uh, you were making it up as you, as you went. Yeah. Um, one of the, and I have, I brought some stuff here from our, our I took off the walls. There's the John Gray player that we built many years ago. Uh, wow. It had two channels of video. It was all custom designed. I designed it with the team. And uh, that was before when streaming was in its infancy. So Voice wow. America has been here for 20 years online doing live radio. And what I do is I start someone with a show and they grow that show. And I have shows on a network that do millions of listeners every year. And um, I wrote an article on LinkedIn about how to go big with your podcast because I got a lot of people always asking me questions about how do you get those shows to a million listeners? Well, there's yeah. a process for it. So um, that's what I do with people is I work that process with them, that strategy, and uh, their shows go big. That's what I do as a producer. Wow. Wow. It's, it's, it's great stuff. And I think it's going to be more and more important for all generations. I think we all need to be connecting more online. So... I mean, I guess the first question is, how can we best understand, do you think, how can we best understand and use the power of media in our personal lives? It's a huge question, but how can we best understand and use it in our personal lives? Well, you have to remember that as an individual, you have a story and the internet is a place to tell stories, just like any screen is, whether it's a movie screen, television screen. So the, the better that you create, the more fine-tuned that story is, that becomes your brand message, that becomes the outreach for your business, and that becomes a way that people know you. They know you as that media personality. Yeah. So that's what we've all become. We all have what's called a digital identity today. You know, I, I have, you know, me, I'm just Randall Libero. I have, you know, my family, and there's my family back there. Um, <laughs> and to my kids and my wife, uh, but to everyone else, I'm this producer guy. 
Yeah. So that's my digital identity is to be this producer guy who does stuff on the internet with people and all the other. So, so how we, uh, how we uh, imbue that digital personality with life, with purpose, with direction in terms of how that, and that entity is communicating with people that becomes your brand message and you can build anything around that you can build a radio show podcast youtube channel uh do live streaming you know whatever you're going to do with it but it really starts with that and the more that you develop and that's a, another media word the more that you develop that so it's as fine-tuned as you can get uh the clearer your communication will be to your market and yeah. the clearer your communication will be to anyone who's interested to do business with, business with you. Yeah, yeah. No, it's powerful stuff. And, uh, you know, I've seen it, it just this year with my with my work. You know, I went, as you know, I went and started doing podcasts back in March. And, and just the reach, the connections, the sort of people I've connected with over the last six months has been stunning, you know. And, mm -hmm. and I think that really is what globalization mark or version two is going to be about. It's going to be... I don't think there's, I think we're going to be far less limited in who we can connect with. You know, there's really very little limit, you know, and, um, and, uh, and I think the younger generations are, I hopefully they'll grasp that. So in terms of media options, I mean, it's a minefield. When I started looking at this, I looked at the different streaming types, software apps and the different broadcasting apps and what media options do people start with? What media options do, do, do business people have and how do they select the right ones? Uh, it depends on how much time, effort, and money you want to put into it. <laughs> because uh, remember, you have a life, you have a business, and then you have to run this media platform. So I always tell people, you've got to decide how much time and effort and money you're willing to spend. And I add money into that because when you start realizing that you can't do it alone, there is no DIY in online media. A lot of people think there is. Uh, I yeah. disagree. Uh, because anybody who does anything in media has a support team. So that's here what we at Voice America provide. We provide a full support team for do your show. You don't have to worry about anything. Show up and talk, and that's it. You're done. Yeah. So for the people who want to do it themselves and do all the technical you know, learning, that's time and effort. That's a learning curve. And if you're willing to, to spend the time to do that to save money, then, yeah, great. That works. Uh, but there's so many people that I talk with that they're running a business. They have, I mean, sometimes, sometimes it's international and yeah. they don't have time to figure all this stuff out. So they're hiring staff and do it. Well, you're spending money. Um, you're, you're bringing people in, you're building your team around what you're doing. That's your production yeah. team. So what I provide as a producer is not only I give you that team to make your job a heck of a lot easier, but also that um, there, we, we know how this, how this industry works. We know all the yeah. ins and outs. We've been doing it long enough. We don't, we've eliminated all the mistakes. When someone comes in and starts a show, it's very smooth and there's a process that we have. So doing it yourself out there, you've got to learn technology. You've got to learn the platform. You've got to manage like setting up this little iPad camera that I have today. You've got to know how to do that, frame a shot. You've got to bring in some lighting. Um, if you're not willing to do this stuff, then again, time, effort, and money. So that's pretty yeah. much the answer, you know, to that question. Yeah. No, you're you're right. If you if you if you fail to plan, you plan to fail. And in terms of strategy, I mean, where do people, where do they start in terms of a media strategy? Where do they start, and and why is it important to to have a strategy to a media strategy to grow your business, particularly in these days? Okay. Because of what I said before, everyone has a presence on the internet and everything is on the internet today. Um, you know, it, it's funny because I always joke at home about, you know, this is actually a phone, you can call me, okay? Uh, <laughs> so it, it's a way that we communicate um, and people have become so ingrained in using uh, the internet that they forget about all the analog stuff. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. when you look at production, you have to do a lot of things that are not analog, that are not digital. They're analog. You have to organize your ideas. You've got to put them down on paper. You've got to think of how is this show going to be seen? Where is it going to be seen? Am I going to be on YouTube? Am I going to be on Facebook Live? Am I going to be on a podcast? Am I going to? Be... You've got to select what again the time and effort that you're willing to spend to do that. Audio okay. is always the easiest. 
if you're doing a conversation like this with video, then you got to, I mean, it took me an hour in here to set everything up this morning. It may not look like I did anything, but yeah, I mean, it does. you have to, you've got to do all that stuff. And some people are okay with that and they're used to it. Um, so I have a friend of mine, Paula Rizzo, if you want to learn, um, and I'll mention Paula because she's a good friend. Yeah. She's a former host of mine, her and yeah. Terry Trespicio, who's done a the TED talk that did 4 million views. So Paula was a former Fox producer and she has this great LinkedIn, look her up, R-I-Z-Z-O, and you can learn all sorts of things from her about, you know, the particulars of really producing your content correctly. Yeah. Um, you know, for people who want to work with me, they can just contact me over LinkedIn, but um, you've got to understand a lot of things. Uh, and I wrote, again, I wrote that article and that article on LinkedIn that, that I wrote is a good place for people to start to just read that because mm -hmm. Usually when I ask the questions of, you know, I ask all the pertinent questions and I basically kind of burst their media reality bubble a little bit of someone <laughs> I talk to. They go, oh, my God, do I have to do all that uh, yeah, to yeah. have a successful show? Yes. And they go, boy, that's a lot of stuff. Yeah, yeah. it is. And, and if you talk to anybody who's got any kind of an audience, they know that what they've had to go through. And speaking of audience, that's the other thing you have to consider. The number one mistake that podcasters make is not understanding who their audience is. Who the heck are you talking to? Yeah. And that's where their shows go wrong. They don't have a pro proper format. They don't bring in the proper guests that, that enhance and grow their brand. And the other thing is they don't manage their show. They don't become the host of their show. Like when they introduce someone, they say, oh, you know, tell us about yourself. Uh, yeah, right. <laughs> You're supposed to know that. That's your job to do the research yeah. on that individual. And you introduce them. See, there's a lot of people who get stuff wrong like that. And yeah. people in the professional circles of media and, and the world, they don't make those mistakes. So yeah. that's why those shows aren't popular because they haven't done the homework to do their show properly. They haven't got a proper format. They don't know their audience. And they think that what they have to say is so important that people are going to listen. Do you think a big part of this is that it's it's so easy for everybody to get a laptop, to get a, a camera, to get a you know a, a, a StreamYard account, and just do it right? And so everybody just does it and assume that that's okay. But it but but as you said, you know it takes it takes a lot of strategizing. Do you think that's part of the the issue is that everybody's rushing to do it? But I don't think they're sure. really strategizing. Well, you're not thinking it through. I mean, just think about it. if you're going to plan an aspect of your business, think of the time and effort because you have to budget Absolutely. it out. You've got to think, Absolutely. you know, all the details are going. You know, like I said, media is the yeah. most important aspect of, of what you will do in your business is how you communicate to people. What does your website yeah. look like? Is everything on there? Are your social media channels together? Are you continually mm -hmm. posting something uh, to reach your market every day, maybe more than mm -hmm. once a day? You know, all these yeah. things have to be taken into consideration. That's part of your media strategy. You're planning that yeah. out and you have people assigned to do it or you have a producer that you work with and all that stuff. Again, it's it's really the same process. And when people wake up to the fact that, you know, this is not this has gone far beyond a DIY thing. And I really stress that because 10 mm. years ago, you could still kind of get away with it. <laughs> not anymore. Because yeah. the val the look of your content, the way it looks, because people, they don't have time for things that look amateurish, the sound quality isn't good, they turn you right off. And mm -hmm. they'll never come back because they go, ah, that, yeah. that person, they don't know what they're doing. Because they equate the quality of the, your production with the value of your message. It, it's so true. And, you know, I, I've been amazed this year that, you know, I've started mentoring somebody in India an executive. I'm I'm working with a company in the states for a you know an online training program, and 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 that's only really happened because I've had an online presence. But but I'm very cognizant because we're talking about it that I have to I have to raise my game as well and raise my profile because you can't just stop. You know you have to keep developing, improving. So, yeah. and you mentioned questions before, and what are the questions? that we need to, you know, if you're about to jump into this world of, of putting together a media strategy, what, what are the key questions you need to ask yourself? The key ones? Well, you need to understand what developing a show and developing an idea is about. Again, coming back to that, because if you've done your homework on the way you communicate, the way you look on camera, and you maybe 
you've got uh, maybe an image consultant to get mm -hmm. a wardrobe if you're going to be doing it like more than once or twice a week. Um, you've got to think about uh, putting together a lot of the pieces and have them. It's it's like a it's like a wheel with multiple spokes, okay? Because yeah. you're at the center of that wheel, and you're and that's where you're creating the content. And when it goes out on Facebook, LinkedIn, um, you know, email, uh, you know, all, all your social touch points, um, and then the other part of it is how you're interacting with your guests. We haven't even gotten mm. to that yet because there's a <laughs> lot of tremendous value in interacting with guests, and making connections, yeah. just like we made, it, we made a connection. Yeah, yeah. And bringing people into your circle because those people now know you and they share your content with people and you don't even know they're doing it. So the more that you expand that wheel and the spokes of all those different places that things are going out, that is what you have to manage and that media strategy has a life of its own it's going to grow and do things in ways that you're not always in control of it because yeah. there's things happen on the internet where people share things and it goes all, all over and all of a sudden you're getting a call from nbc to be a commentator on one of their news stories and how did that happen you know or if you really want to get big quickly you can hire a publicist that's another aspect of i mean that's old that's old analog style you know promotion yeah yeah so, you know, those are all things that you have to consider is uh, managing your guests, communicating with them, making sure they put the show out there. I mean, there's so many moving pieces of having a media strategy that um, I, a host, one of my hosts interviewed me years ago and she was just, she was doing her pilot series. And she said, yeah, it's great if you never want to get any sleep. <laughs> you're you're a bit constantly busy with the stuff. I said, yeah, she says, I'm glad to come in here and just do my show. and." Then I go back to what I usually do. Yeah, and that's yeah. that's pretty much the size of it. If if you really want to have that media strategy work for you in a powerful way to reach a lot of people, again, time, effort, and money. It's yeah, it's, got, it's, those are the variables you're working with. You're right. It's the same. I, it's funny, you know, because I think it's because it's so easy to get online and stuff. But but you're right. The analogy that you use around businesses, what you wouldn't dream of launching a business without, you know getting a bank account and, and, you know, getting an accountant and a tax advisor and all this sort of stuff. And it's exactly the same thing. You know, it's, it's make or break stuff. And, and particularly nowadays where, you know, I talk about the three R's of success, you know, revenue, risk, and reputation. And reputation is about your brand and about the, your online presence. That's what this is, reputation. That's, that's the key thing. It's reputation. Yeah. yeah. Um, and so, just moving on from that, I mean, how do you see media content that we create serving the world or improving lives? I mean, you know, maybe talk to somebody who's thinking about creating their own media strategy and maybe contacting you. What would you say to them in terms of if you do this, you know, you can serve the world and improve the lives of others? How would you articulate that? Wow. Um, well, I wrote a mission statement on my website, which is my mission statement, why I do what I do. Yeah. And I learned years ago from uh, Dr. John D. Martini, one of my former clients. And uh, I mean, he's sort of my inspirational mentor. I learned a lot yeah, yeah. from John when I started doing this kind of a thing. And um, he challenged me. Sure. And I'll tell you this story because I think it's very relevant. Uh, he looked at me in the eye and said, what do you tell yourself every day as far as who you are and what you do? And I said, well, I'm a producer. I do. And I went through a long list of stuff. And he smiled because he knew a lot of it was BS. You know, it's my ego BS. And he looked at me straight in the eye and leaned over the table and he said, say this to yourself. This is one of my affirmations. I am a genius and I apply my wisdom. And I said it, I said, I'm a genius and I apply my wisdom. And he leaned farther over and he said, say it like you mean it. <laughs> and in that moment, a light went on for me as far as yeah. what I, how I saw myself and what I was doing. And I looked at what John does. I mean, I took him out to go to lunch and he opened the car door for me. And I thought, huh? <laughs> so, you know, things like that, because if we take the attitude of service and our brand message and what we do, that means that what we say will come from our heart. It'll be authentic. It'll reach people in the way that we hope it does. Yeah. And we won't have to um, 
MSU, if you know what MSU is, make up. Yeah. I'll leave out the middle word. Um, <laughs> so uh, that authenticity has to do with the way that you build that reputation that we just spoke of. Yeah. And the more that you create that, and I don't mean do this, you know, do this like a trolling way. I mean, really, this is what you're about. This is what, this is why you're doing what you're doing. This is why you're alive. Um, yeah. doing and you chose the profession that you're in um, because it speaks to you in some way and how can you serve the world is not only your media strategy but what you're doing in life and in business mm. and um, the other part of that is seeing yourself in a way that is empowered because if you choose to see yourself that way you will automatically communicate that energy through the camera and through your voice and when people pick that up, they will hear that authenticity because you're not making it up, it's real. And the more that you can do that, the more that you can make it real, and that's the difference between an actor who's pretty good and an actor who's really good, is because they know the secret to doing that. And I'm yeah. doing a podcast right now about Marilyn Monroe, and Marilyn Monroe is one of those people who had a very tragic childhood, and she mm -hmm. created a persona that she was able to communicate through to be able to bring the message that she wanted to the world about empower, an empowered woman, femininity, um, sexuality, uh, that was okay in the, in the 50s. You know, she knew what she was doing. She knew exactly how to manage her reputation, manage her image. Yeah. And, uh, and she became extremely famous. She studied that. And you know, she was an avid reader and she read many, many books about the power of the mind. She studied mm -hmm. that. So mm -hmm. you may think, you, if you know Marilyn and, and you listen to our BehindTheIcon.com podcast, you'll find a whole different person uh, that's behind the icon that we know as Marilyn. And wow. so that's what fascinated me about her life, that how could this young girl who came from very tragic circumstances become one of the most famous people of all time? And I just, mm -hmm. to me, that's a fascinating story about how she created that. And so that's uh, something that um, by studying people like that, you'll learn a lot. It's fascinating because, you know, you, you have all these thought leaders out there, the, you, know, these, uh, you know, these experts in leadership and coaching and branding and the like, but not many actually get to the top. And what, what is it about those, you know, the Marshall Goldsmiths and the and Demartinis and the John Matones and Sally Helgersons and people like that? What is it about, what, what have they done? What do they do that the hundreds of thousands of equally smart people don't do? What, what, is, what, do they have a conscious awareness of the pathway? Is there a bit of luck? What, what do you think? What sets them apart? Well, what I just spoke of about finding your true essence as far as you know, your message is, yeah. is how you see yourself in relationship to the world. And if your worldview is that everything's going to heck in a handbasket and, you know, and all the other stuff, then as far as the small little message that you're doing can become a big message if mm. your vision is directed toward that purpose. So when you take that attitude of service and you realize that everyone who takes that attitude is adding to that momentum of improving the world and making our world a better place. So yeah. inspiring people through your message, getting them to see a larger possibility for themselves, getting them to see a, uh, you know, in, uh, looking at the world in a positive light. And I don't mean like, you know, Ma Mary yeah. Poppins, Namby Pamby. I mean, really reality. How can yeah. you serve to be a lightning rod to basically open people's eyes to be able to see a greater possibility for themselves and see the world as it truly is. You know, I yeah. often tell people, I said, all these devices that we have on, because I remember before any of them existed, turn them all off for three days, go outside, <laughs> sit on the ground, take your shoes off and look up at the sky and the trees and the birds and everything. And remember where the heck you are in the world, <laughs> because it's not, on the, it's not on these screens. It's yeah. in real life. The more that you connect with the reality of what this world really is, go and, you know, go to the, hang out with animals, go, you know, go, I have three cats and a dog. You know, I spend time with them because they re keep reminding me about yeah. 
what life is really about. It's not this digital stuff that's going on. It's the, like I said, the analog world that we really live in. If you want to yeah. call it analog, I, I think it's the natural world that we live in. So the more that you spend time, I always say there's a balance. The more that you spend, the time that you spend in your digital life, you have to spend just as much time in your real life. So yeah. my once a week we have, everything goes off at my house. We turn it all off. And uh, we spend time with each other. And we spend time communicating. Uh, maybe it's not a complete day, a part of a day. Um, that's really important uh, to do that now because more and more. Because it is. The, the whole digital life that we have is going to get more, become more and more entrenched in what we do and in, in yeah. everything. And it's going yeah. to change because when we move into the quantum computing world, which is coming upon us very quickly, if you want to know more yeah. about what, if you want to know half a peek into the future, go to quantum.gov because you'll yeah. find out what, what the, what this, what the American have planned for the future <laughs> it's yeah. right there on the website um, yeah so you know and we have things that are and lightning fast i mean phones are are now as good as a as a high level movie camera absolutely you can film anything and absolutely. you can take them everywhere so the clear the more that you understand as far as the power that you have with your message and that that authentic message that you have can make the world a better place if everyone does that, then this world will become better. It will improve. Yeah. Uh, people will have a better outlook. Um, connections will be more uh, profitable. Um, You're right. Yeah, yeah, all those things will happen. But it starts right. with each of us personally to start what we're creating because we are creators. Um, our, you know, we create through thought. We create through action. We create through intention. So yeah. the more that you understand those principles and study those principles, um, for me, you know, I studied like I was involved with the Unity Churches. I started the radio network many years ago and I was reading Charles Fillmore and he was writing since the 1880s. And uh, one of the one of the things that he said is um, see yourself as a producer of new ideas. So that's why I say be a producer, be revolutionary put ideas out there that are going to change the world. Don't be afraid, you know, see yeah. your own genius and work with that. Um, yeah. Take that on. I mean, it's not a genius from ego. It's a genius of knowing the connection that you have to the universe. That's the key. Use that, use that power that you have because the more that each of us remember that power that we have to do that, uh, the more impact that we have in the world and that impact Will produce results that will be life changing for many others. Now that, that that is profound to put it that way. It's not about me, me, me from an ego perspective. It's me, me, me in that you know I'm one of I'm equally valid as the other seven and a half billion people. And but other people aren't going to hear me unless I say that. So say what you <laughs> need to say and get it out. And you know I, I'm you know I'm working with I'm coaching and mentoring people and. I'm just amazed how many people suffer from this imposter syndrome. They're lacking confidence. Mm -hmm. They have the capability, but they lacked they lack the confidence. And I, you know, I'm working with somebody in India now, and I said to her, just just publish an article, get it on LinkedIn, right? And 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 there was a bit of a journey in in in, in that in that process with her. She published she produced published it yesterday, and it was about matching confidence and capability. Well, the reaction she's had has been amazing, right? It's been amazing, it. and and I feel like saying, I told you so. <laughs> she knows. It. She knows. She it. knows. And you know. Yeah. You get the satisfaction, and she gets the satisfaction because she, when she gets the response, she'll go, yeah. "Wow, that's all it took." Because that's it's all not, it takes. Not that hard. The more it's that you have, hard. you know, I have little reminders everywhere. My wife gave me this mug. It says, "Man, the myth and the legend." So, um, you know, that's for me. That's not for me to impress anybody. That's for me yeah. as a reminder what I'm doing has yeah. purpose and value in the world and it empowers me when I look at it and I drink out of it all day. You know, those yeah. kinds of things is I have little, you know, little, little reminders. You know, there's, you know, your microphone is a reach, <laughs> just a reach away. Anytime you've got to <laughs> be ready to get on the internet um, yeah. with, uh, and, and bring your message out there because you never, you never know what, what's going to happen. And all you have to do is, as we used to say many years ago, speak your truth. 
Yeah. And just, I suppose, bring this to an end in a bit, but you mentioned the internet, right? So to what extent has the world changed since the internet? To what ex extent do we see the world differently now because of the internet? Because it's never going to go, I'm assuming it's never going to go away, Randall. Like the internet is never going to no, go away. It's, it's so, not going to go away. <laughs> so how is it him? So what do you see unfolding as a result of the internet in the future? What do you sense is going to be the future of, we had this chat recently about the, the, the future of connection and communication. What's your feeling about the way we're heading? Well, um, each of us has a part in it. And the more that we remember that because we have the ability to do things like this, then it, the internet will be a place of sharing. It'll be a place of real connection with people. Uh, we've seen that this year. People have used it who really never focused on using it before. True, it's true. And the more that we remember our true selves in, in our communications, then the internet will become a place that will be a global community where we have not only a relationship with our family and our local community, but we have a relationship with the world and and remembering that remembering to bring value to that real value to other people it's going to bring the world together uh, yeah. we've seen just people not driving to work for you know four hours a day or however long it takes you and being at home more they're calmer they they're they're learning new things they're learning new skills the families are coming closer together people looked at the situation this year uh, in a very negative light. I look at it in a very positive light. I mean, Me just, too. I mean, look at how each of us think about yourself and everyone who's watching this. Think about how you were a year ago and how you are now. And it's incredible. Think of what's different and actually write, make a list of what do you feel? How do you feel differently than you did a year ago? And look at mm -hmm. when you read that list is think about the the energy that you brought to those changes and how your world has changed in your own small circle of reality will then take that i take that energy and take those ideas and bring them to your business to your message to what you say online talk about what's going on today talk about your feelings you know express mm -hmm. yourself because this is a this is a, a medium of expression and there's a lot of people who never we never heard from before and we didn't ever knew what they were thinking, but now we can. So, you know, in these little devices that we have, we can bring that message of, like I said, our, our mind and our heart to our message and what we're doing with people. And if everybody does that, if everybody remembers that they have that power and they can affect potentially millions of people. I mean, I, I think I started a channel years ago called Seventh Wave. And when I did an assessment on that channel after 11 years, I realized that those radio shows reached 50 million people. <laughs> and I went, wow. Yeah. And I just did, I just did what I do, you know? And, and, and when you think about that, you're realizing that the impact that that has on, it's on the world. Yeah, it's amazing. I mean, you, you just, I was just listening to you there and I was thinking, you said, think about what you're doing a year ago. A year ago, I was looking at people like you and some of those thought leaders I mentioned, Marshall and John Matone and Sally and Dory Clark and Hortense Legentil. I could list them all, right? And I was thinking, what have they? Wh why aren't I talking with them? Why, why aren't I on that stage, right? And it's funny, a year later, I've spoken to all these people, right? So mm -hmm. many of them, 40-odd growth leaders, uh, global gurus and leaders, and I've, I'm doing, a, as you know, a, a, the Global Growth Leader podcast right. with Henry Wang. And we're, right. you know, today we spoke to an amazing woman in Ireland, uh, Breda McCaig and Amy Wong from Hong Kong around talent and transformation. And, and I'm doing radio stuff. And I, the, re the reason that has changed, I think, is exactly as you've just said. I just decided, right, just, just do this, Simon. You have something to say. Don't worry. Don't self-impose constraints of of self you know self flagellate don't flagellate self don't don't worry about what people think say it right you have an equally valid point it's just ma it is matching that confidence with a capability and you know and today i've just recorded a whole series of videos for an education program in the states called steer us for the younger generations and i've called the program who do you want to be right and there are 13 modules and it's going to be going out and workbooks and videos 
and, and cartoons. And, and I'm sitting here thinking, wow, I've done all that in a year just by changing my mindset. Imagine yep. what, you know, imagine if we all did that, changed our mindset yep. from a, not from That's an it. ego perspective, <laughs> not, but it's not from an ego perspective. It's, yep. it's, it's what can I bring out of me and provide to the world? You know, it's, it's amazing. Right. It's amazing. Yeah, wow. that is the power of media. It's, um, <laughs> as we said in the title of this, uh, you know, you, your business and the world. I mean, there is a thread that comes uh, from, uh, from us because, see, all of this technology is nothing without the people behind it. Exactly. And that, that's with, it's just like when you watch a movie, it's, it's, you're not interested in all the technical, the way the camera moves and the editing and, you know, all that becomes invisible. What matters to you is the value that you're receiving from going through the journey with the characters exactly. in that story that you're watching. So exactly. we all have a story. And when we share that story in a true way, a way that in, empowers not only us, but empowers everyone that hears it, and the more that we remember that, uh, the more that we will have the effect on the world that we hope to have and in a, in a way that, uh, that has value, that has meaning, that has purpose, that has a direction. And, and we bring ourselves to uh, the, our message. That's your story. And we kind of circle back to the beginning of that. It all starts with knowing who you are, looking yeah. at your story, bringing value to that story, sharing that story. And then however you want to do it, whatever you know, method, YouTube channel, yeah. podcasts, whatever, that's, that, that really doesn't matter. What matters is is that message how it serves people's awareness expansion growth and everything else and i love that you use the word growth and everything because it yep. shows a journey that we're all on and this journey yep. of living through this time of you know all the internet and digital stuff and everything like that but i again i i just my suggestion to people is at least part of a day once a week turn everything off and do something that's outside and yeah. in, in nature and do something like that because it, it replenishes you because all this stuff is like the pace of it is so fast, instantaneous. We have to yeah. slow down uh, and remember who we are. Um, I spent some time up in the north in the, with the native people, the Hopi nation, and yeah. they have an expression. They say, as things speed up, you should slow down. <laughs> it's yeah. true. It's true. It's true. That well, it's been really wonderful chatting with you. And and Randall, how do people find out about you and and Voice Voice America and and the work you do? And and if people want to reach out to you, okay. Well, uh, what I do uh, as a producer is anyone who wants to get a, a question answered, they have, they have a burning question to figuring out what their media strategy is. I'm happy to chat with you for 15 minutes. And if I can answer your question, that's my gift to you. Happy to do that for you. If you want to have a longer relationship and do something more like a podcast, then go to voiceamerica.com. By the way, we're launching a whole new 3.0 website in about February next year, which will be really cool. Um, uh, or you can find me on LinkedIn. It's L-I-B-E-R-O, Randall. And uh, send me a message, ask to connect. And when you connect, say, hey, I want to talk with you. And uh, can we make an appointment? Yeah. And that's it. I mean, I have a, I have a website, which is my name, I have, I have, I really don't do much with it because it just kind of sits there. It's, you know, I got I, I have to do a better job on my own media strategy <laughs> sometimes. I do. You're busy. You know, You're busy. I'm busy with the other people because, yeah, you know, yeah. for me, I mean, that's my, that's my satisfaction, but that's yeah, how you yeah. get in touch with me. I'm easy to find. And if you want to have, um, want to do a full kind of, um, build out your whether you want a media strategy, but really that 15 minutes will be able to figure out you find out what what you need if I can even help you or yeah. you're kind of a lot of people I talk to they already know it they just need a little nudge in the right direction. Yeah, you, you've, um, because, you've, you've, done this, yeah. you've done this with me. I mean, we've had wonderful chats and I, I'm looking forward to working with you next year and and you've nudged me in the right direction. I'm I'm scoping my you know, my the right. product I want to work on with you, and I, I don't want to skimp on this because I have a I, I have something a message to give, and so I I really look forward to that, and uh, it's wonderful to get to know you, and uh, you know I, I think the more people who can get media savvy, but in that authentic non egotistical way, the better mm -hmm. for us all. 
So thanks so much. It was a wonderful chat, Randall. And I'll talk to you soon. <laughs> thanks, Simon. It's been a pleasure. Likewise. Take care. Bye. See you. Bye.